I've always lived near the river, and I've always wanted a boat, a boat of my own. But my mum won't hear of it. She's funny about the river. I think she once knew someone that drowned. But one day last summer, I found a boat, a canoe. It was drifting in the water near where we live. It just seemed to be waiting for me. No. He must have drifted down from Great Barley. Are you going to take it back? If I can find the other half of that mooring post, I might know where it comes from. Mummy says we're not to go in boats without Daddy. Mummy wants you. Oh, tell her I'm busy. I'll be back in a minute. Go on, quick. I knew it was wrong, and if Mum found out, she'd be furious. But I knew if I went back with Becky then, and she told Mum about the canoe, that would be the end of it. But if I got away now, before anyone found out, well, even if they were cross afterwards, it would be worth it. And at the back of my mind, I thought, maybe the owner didn't use the canoe much, and might not want it back. That's very kind of you. And I think you should apologise, Adam. Sorry. You'd better have a bath and get out of those wet clothes. What's your name? David Moss. I'm Miss Codling, and that's my nephew, Adam. Come along. I'd never met any of the Codlings before, though everyone knew their family had been living in the village of Great Barley for hundreds of years. Their house was called Godlings, too. Adam? Adam? You are the idlest gardeners where we have ever employed. I don't know how much, my daughter, pleasure, but it is far too much. I, I, I see you from my study window, just, just wasting time. I warn you, when my son comes home, he'll put a stop to that. You'll be sent packing unless you mend your ways. And my son is expected home any, any, any day now. Who's that? My grandfather. You think he's mad, don't you? Well, he's not. He's jolly clever. He's just a bit muddled about time, that's all.
Adam was right. I did think his grandfather was mad. I thought Adam was pretty strange as well. He must have guessed what I was thinking, because he tried to explain. He said his parents had lived abroad when he was a baby, but then they'd been killed in an accident. So he'd been sent to England to live with his aunt and grandfather, here at Codlings. But his grandfather never really understood about the accident. He'd been waiting ever since for his son, John, to come home. Sometimes he got really muddled and thought Adam was his son. It all sounded jolly odd, and I was glad when Adam said tea was ready. Is that your father? He's a bit like you. Of course not. Look what's written on it. Hello, Dominic. 1585. He's my ancestor, Jonathan Cobbling. Adam! Coming! Adam, don't do that! Anything more for you, David? No, thanks. I'd better go. Hmm? Mum doesn't know where I am. She'll be worried. Oh, I see. Well, you've got your clothes and this parcel, haven't you? You needn't worry about returning the ones you've got on. They're too small for Adam now, anyway. Just drop them in any time you're passing. OK. Thanks for the tea. Oh. Thank you, David, for bringing back the canoe. I'm sure Adam's very grateful. Aren't you, Adam? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, I'll come out the drive with you. Bye. Bye. So that was that. Adam didn't seem to want to be friends. I sort of hoped he'd suggest we went out in the canoe together sometime, but he didn't. He seemed to be thinking about something else all the time, something very important. Do you have far to go? Only to Little Bali. About two miles. Well, bye. Listen, David. Can you keep a secret? Yes. Well, it's about the canoe, and I need some help. You see, Grandfather and Aunt Dinah haven't got very much money, and they can't afford to keep me here anymore, so they're sending me away to Birmingham at the end of the summer. We've got some relations there. I keep telling them that I don't want to go, but Aunt Dinah says I've got to for my own good. But what's the canoe got to do with it? Well, I need the canoe to look for the treasure. What treasure? Our family treasure. I know you think I'm nuts, but there really is some. Look, I'll explain all about it tomorrow. But please, say you'll come. OK, I'll try. But my mum's funny about the river. Bye. So Adam did need a friend after all. I thought the story about the treasure sounded pretty far-fetched. But if there was a chance of going out in the canoe, I was determined to come back the next day. David, you're back. Of course I'm back. They all think you're drowned. Now or not, they'll be ever so cross. David, is that you? Yes. David, you wicked boy! I might have known there'd be trouble. At first, I thought Mum would never let me go to Codlings again. So I didn't say anything about it till they calmed down a bit. Tomorrow. Oh, Mum, can I? What? And play in that dreadful, dangerous boat? I wouldn't hear of it. Oh, please, Mum. The canoe isn't dangerous, and anyway, we can both swim. I don't reckon they'll come to much harm, Betty. You worry too much about the boy. Well, we'll see. Anyway, I want you back at a decent hour next time. So you saw old Mr Codling, then? Yep, he's potty. David, that's not a nice thing to say. The man's ill. Well... Come on now, David, bed. Oh, please. I haven't finished my cocoa yet. Bed. All oh, right. Night. Good night, dear. Good night. Well, Mum did let me go. 
but not until the next afternoon. I was afraid Adam would think I wasn't coming. He might have gone off in the canoe by himself. Your mother let you come then? Yeah, but I mustn't be home too late. You didn't tell her about the treasure? Of course not. What is the treasure anyway? Oh, it's rings and jewels and gold chains and stuff. And it belonged to Jonathan Codlew. That man in the portrait? Yeah. Crikey, he lived in 15 something. Well, I know it sounds hopeless, but it's worth a try, isn't it? I can't just sit around all summer thinking about Birmingham. Oh, come on, I'll show you something. We went into the library and Adam got out some notes. He said they were a translation his grandfather had made of an old family manuscript. The manuscript was written in 1588, the year of the Spanish Armada, when people thought Spain was going to invade England. In order to defend the country, lots of ordinary men had gone off to join the army. Before Jonathan Codling went, he hid the family treasure. This was what his wife, Judith, had written about it later. My husband took the treasure and went forth from the house, but none knew where, it being night. He was away a clear hour and came back empty-handed and spoke not of where he'd been, but called for clean stockings, his own being wet through. I begged him to tell me where he had hidden the treasure, but he said he would tell our daughter Sarah, being then 11 years of age, for that she had a good memory and a silent tongue. And when he had spoken privately with her, he took horse and away. Now, when by the will of God, my husband did later return to these parts, it is known that he left the inn at Great Barley ahead of his companions, intending to be home by midnight. Yet he never came to our house, and in the morning, a shepherd chanced to look over the bridge and saw my husband lying dead. After this, I sought to recover the treasure and asked Sarah what he had told her. But though I beat her soundly, this foolish rhyme is all that she could remember. What's the rhyme? You won't understand it. Listen. When Philip came to the single rose over the water, the treasure was taken where no one knows, none but my daughter. What does it mean? Well, Philip is probably Philip of Spain, who's leading the Armada, and that came over the water. And Aunt Dinah says that the single rose was probably Elizabeth I of England. Well, then the rhyme doesn't say anything. Sarah must have forgotten something. Just supposing Sarah remembered all the words correctly, but forgot the exact way her father said them. So, when Philip came to the single rose, over the water the treasure was taken. He took the treasure over the water? Yes. And that's when he got his wet stockings. Exactly. And what's the nearest water to here? The river. I think he took the treasure across the river. And his house was here, on the same site as this one. So it must be somewhere over there on the far bank of the river. At first, the idea of looking for treasure seemed very exciting. But as we went along, I began to realize just how difficult it was going to be. I didn't really think we had much chance of finding it, but being out on the river was really great. And I understood then how Adam must feel about being sent away to Birmingham. I made up my mind to help him somehow, even if it did seem like a bit of a wild goose chase. Adam said the most important clue was knowing that when Jonathan Codling hid the treasure, he'd only been away from the house for a clear hour. That meant he'd take no more than half an hour to reach the hiding place. So the first thing we had to work out was the farthest distance he could have gone in that time. 
That first afternoon, we went upstream. But after we'd been going for about 20 minutes, we found our way was blocked by a mill. We couldn't go any further, so we decided to have a look round. Hello, lads. Who's that? Mr. Tay. He owns the mill. Well, 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 well. Are you looking for treasure too? Now you're a codling, I know. My name's not Arthur Tay. I'm Adam Codling. Indeed you are, indeed you are. And just like your grandfather. How's he keeping? Not very well just at the moment. I'm sorry to hear that. Seeing you just now reminded me. That's why I made my little joke about the treasure. <laughs> what a wild goose chase that was. What was, Mr Tay? Well, let me see. It must have been about um, ten years ago. He came up in that very canoe. What are you doing in that boat? I asked him. He, he was, uh, wasn't too happy in the water, and he was getting on a bit, even in those days. I'm looking for the long lost family treasure, he shouts. Mind if I look around? And up he come. Well, of course, he didn't find anything. Ah, it only seems like yesterday. I've never been inside a mill. Haven't you, lads? Well, look, you come in and have a good look round. Good time now. Everyone's knocking off soon. Yes, your grandfather was very interested in this part of the mill, I remember. I can see the river, down there, between the cracks. That's right, lad. We're right over the water here. That's <laughs> quick. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Day. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, <laughs> like him and he's sweet. Like his grandfather. Yes. Yes, he is. Well, is he your granddad? No, not very. Oh dear. And your auntie, Miss Dinah. She always had a good word for me at Miss Dinah. <laughs> good night. Good night, Spring. Terrified of your grandfather, he is. Of course, he used to work in your garden, you know, till your grandfather sent him packing for some reason or other. Oh, Squeak ain't never forgot it. Of course, all you cuddlings have got a temper. Mr. Tay? Yes, lad? How old's the mill? How old's the mill? Well, I wouldn't rightly like to say for sure. Now, my old granddaddy remembered her being built. That were coddling temper again, you see. This mill wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for coddling temper. Must have been old, um, old Darius coddling. He got so mad with some folk down Little Barley Way who had their own water mill but wasn't paying him what he thought were enough rent. He built a whole new channel just to cut off their supply. <laughs> oh, must have cost him a fortune. But that's against the law. Ah, well, by all accounts, old Darius wasn't too worried about the law. <laughs> but the daft thing was, when he built this new channel, he cut off his own supply as well. So he had to build this <laughs> new mill instead.
Yes, dear? Tea's ready. Oh, just come in, my sweet. Do you last like a cup of tea? Uh, no, thanks. My aunt's expecting us. Oh, well, some other time, perhaps. Oh, yes, thanks. Right. Bye-bye, lads. Bye. Bye. Thank Pleasure. you. Can't be the mill, then. No. Even Mr T's grandfather can't remember back to the Armada. I wonder why that funny old man's called Squeak. What's an awful nickname? I suppose it's short for Squeaker. Bit like Telltale Moss. Or Treachery Codling. Listen, I thought of something while we were in the mill. Remember Mr Tay said we're right over the water here? Just think where we were standing. We we're on a sort of bridge. We never thought of that, but it fits. A bridge is over the water more than anything else. Yeah. What's the matter? Well, it's OK for you. The whole thing's just a puzzle, a game, and it doesn't really matter whether we find the answer or not. But it really does matter to me, so it's worse when I think that we're not going to find anything. We've only just started. We haven't looked downstream at all yet. Oh, come on. I'm sure I'm right about the bridge. Hey, I've just thought of something. There's a bridge in Jonathan Codling's portrait. Perhaps that's some sort of clue. So you'll carry on?